Welcome to Worship with First Lutheran. Want to let you know as we get started here that our services on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights will now be live streamed. You can watch them on Facebook Live, you can watch them on YouTube, or you can go to our website, the number 3 crossorg and see those Sunday morning or Wednesday evening services live streamed. Today we're starting a new series focusing on word and sacrament, so we'll hear about uh, what is God's word, how does it get delivered to you, and in the weeks ahead we'll hear about baptism and communion. So for this service, we'll start with Shout to the Lord. At this time, we come together for a time of confession and to hear a word of forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may completely love you and glorify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take a time of silence now to turn over to God the things that have come between us and our neighbors and us and God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Our first reading for today is from Genesis chapter 1, beginning with the first verse. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 10. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all have obeyed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So, faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. And our gospel lesson for today from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The Gospel of the Lord. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, use these words that I've put together here to deliver good news and with it faith in the ears of those who hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. So we've been going through this series on the Ten Commandments, uh, on the Apostles' Creed, on the Lord's Prayer. We've been learning about what kind of God it is that you've got and the sort of things that this God promises to you. So in this new series, focusing on God's Word and the sacraments, we're looking at the question of, How do you know? How do you know that this is a God who is for you, not against you? You can know because of God's word and the sacraments. You'll be hearing more about the sacraments in the weeks ahead about baptism and communion, but today we're really going to focus on God's word. What is it? A lot of times you hear that in the church, oh, this is God's word, and usually we're talking about scripture, um, but it can mean a few different things here. So when you, you hear the word, God's word, The simplest way to think about it uh, is to equate, I hear God's word, that means Jesus. That's what we heard in the gospel reading for today. In the beginning was the word and it was with God. And then we go on in that story in John's gospel, we hear the word became flesh. So you can think God's word, we're talking about Jesus here. God's word is Jesus. The other place a lot of times people think when they hear God's word, they think we're talking about scripture. We're talking about the Bible. Now, Bible, that's just a fancy word for book. So what makes that book full of words, God's word, is any time that scripture points you to Jesus. Points you to Jesus. So it's not God's word because of its, uh, whether or not it's inerrant, it's not about the integrity or the lack thereof of its authors, but what makes Scripture become God's Word is when it points you to Jesus. See how this is all coming back around to Jesus. Finally, for that matter, the Holy Spirit can use any set of words, any set of words to point you to Jesus, at which point it becomes God's Word. So yes, it could be through a preacher, It could just as well be through a five-year-old or a 99-year-old. It could be your spouse's words. It could be your neighbor's words. It could be the cashier's words at the checkout. Jesus says in John's gospel, the wind blows wherever it chooses. And so it is with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uses whatever words it wants to, can pick up any of them and use them to point you to Jesus, at which point you've got God's word, something that points you to Jesus gives you Jesus, puts Jesus in the ears of others. There you've got God's word. 
Now we need to look at this a little closer though because while the Holy Spirit can use common words that you and I use, when it becomes God's word, when Jesus gets delivered, something different has happened than what happens when you or I use words. Our words alone can only point to a reality. God's word actually creates realities, makes something new. So it might help us to do a little compare and contrast here. Imagine, for instance, you're leaving the church parking lot here. You're going down three cross road and you get to the end of it and there's the T intersection with Highway 86 and there's a stop sign there. If you didn't know that, there's a stop sign there, okay? <laughs> when you get out there, there's a sign that points to a reality that you should stop here, but it does not create it. That stop sign suggests that you should stop there, but it cannot make you stop there. Doesn't mean you shouldn't stop there, by the way. I don't need any calls from our local authority saying, oh, yeah, you told me, uh, some of your parishioners have told me they actually don't need to stop at that stop sign. Yes, you do. You need to stop there. But the word stop printed on a piece of metal there doesn't actually cause you to stop. It tells you that you should. It points to a reality, but it doesn't actually make it happen. If God were to speak to you right there and say, stop, you wouldn't have a choice. It would happen. When God speaks, when it's God's word, now you've got the thing itself. It's not a sign suggesting a reality, but it actually creates a reality. It makes it happen. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, the word of God is alive. It's active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. When God speaks, it happens. Okay? For instance, Genesis 1-1 that you heard today, God says, let there be light and there's light. It happens. We get this throughout the Gospels too when Jesus speaks, right? Jesus says to a crippled man, he says, get up your mat and walk. And he does. He says to Lazarus, dead in the tomb, come out. And Lazarus comes to life and walks out of the tomb. And maybe Jesus' most offensive words that create a new, re new reality, he says, your sins are forgiven. And they're gone. They don't belong to you anymore. Now, maybe the closest we can get to understanding how words can create realities, maybe the closest we can get to it as humans is thinking about our feelings of fear and love. Imagine, if you will, maybe the most gruff or, or strongest person in your classroom or in your neighborhood, uh, in your neck of the woods, or maybe think about somebody who's hurt you or somebody that you love. And they say to you, I've got my eyes on you. You better watch out. Depending on how you hear those words, that can create a new reality for you, how you go about living, right? So uh, that's, that's a negative way that words can potentially create a new reality. This can work in the positive too, though. For instance, uh, when I get up in the morning, I go and stand in front of the mirror and, you know, I'm looking at myself and I'm saying, mm, there's a little more of me in, in some parts than I'd like. Uh, there's a little less of me in, in other parts than, than I'd like. Uh, I got these dark rings under my eyes because I've been up all night long thinking about things I wish I'd have done differently yesterday. And looking in the mirror, the story I tell myself, the, the assessment of the situation, I say, unlovable. Then, then comes my wife, looking at the exact same thing that I'm looking at, and much to my surprise says, I love you. I love you. Which is really confusing to me, right? Because she has to live with me. She knows all about my annoying and disgusting habits. She knows about the person that I hope to be, and she knows all about the person that's there when all the nice wears off. She knows all that and strangely says, I love you. Her words author a different story about me, different than the one that I tell myself. For the life of me, I don't understand it, but I believe it. What about God's word now? What about the new reality, the new story he tells you about you? 
you are forgiven. You're free. You're loved. How can you believe those words? How do you come to have faith that it's actually true and that it's really for you? Paul wrote about this a little bit in that reading from Romans chapter 10 you heard today. Faith comes by hearing. These are your, these are your faith receptors right here. Okay? Faith happens to you. Like hearing happens to you. It's something that's done to you. You are passive. You're not active when you're hearing, right? You're passive. It's something that's happening to you. Faith is not something that you whip up in yourself and you say one day, now today is the day and I've made up my mind, I'm going to believe everything that I've heard. It doesn't work that way. Faith, like love, happens to you. You find yourself in a state of believing. Back to our analogy of love, I didn't say to myself, by golly, today is the day, November 20th, I am going to fall in love with Carrie Jack today. That would have probably driven her in the other direction. She'd have thought I was stalking her or something. If I had tried to engineer my love for her, we probably wouldn't be together today. She'd have run for the hills long ago. Instead, it happened to me. I fell in love. Same thing with faith. You don't make up your mind that you're going to have it. It happens to you. And how does it happen to you? Jesus, God's word, Jesus that we've been talking about, gets delivered into your ear. One of my professors put it this way. He said, you can think of it like the FedEx delivery truck. If you haven't seen it before, look at the logo on the side of the truck the next time you see one of those FedEx delivery trucks. In between the E and the X, there's an arrow. There's an arrow in that logo. That's how faith gets delivered by Jesus, like an arrow that gets shot into you. You don't get to control how it goes. Jesus determines what gets delivered to you. So that means me, as a preacher, I don't actually get to decide what gets delivered to you. When it comes to faith, I don't get to decide, I don't get to control what's received by your ears or what isn't. Instead, it's Jesus. Instead, it's the Holy Spirit that brings faith in your hearing. That means I can come up with what I think is the most clever thing to say, the most interesting words to use to point you to Jesus, but finally it's up to Jesus as to what actually gets delivered in your ear. So I can deliver what I think is some of my best work only to hear you say in response, gosh, that didn't make any sense at all. <laughs> he should probably go back to sleep today. I can also deliver to you what I have struggled with and what I feel is a load of garbage only to have you say, wow, that was exactly what I needed to hear today. And it works that way because I, finally, am not the delivery person when it comes to your faith. When it comes to God's word and what you will or won't hear, Jesus is the one who delivers the faith. He's the only one who can deliver to you faith that actually believes these words from God for you. You are forgiven. You are free and you are lovable because I love you. But he brought me in his love for me. Oh, his love. His grace runs 
Let us join together at this time and confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, let us join together uh, in, in prayer for our world and for um, those who are around us. And again, we will be, uh, we'll be uh, singing a response to, the, to each petition. And this week it is uh, to, O oh Lord, hear my prayer. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your word. Uh, for Jesus that you sent into this world and all the words that point us to him, that give us to him. Lord, we uh, know that when we look at ourselves, we see someone who is many times unlovable and not the way that we want to be. We thank you for loving us, for bringing us to Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, you know the struggles that we have in this world, struggles where we want to control everything, where we want to be in charge. Lord, your grace comes to us uh, freely. It comes to us not because of anything that we've done, but because of you. Thank you for that grace, for that love that you shower upon us. Lord, help us to show that love to our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. 
hear our prayer. Lord, we come to you today and we know that there are many who are grieving. There are many losses that we have all faced in the past year or past years. Things that still hurt. Things that sting from the past that are no longer with us. Lord, we pray all, for all who are grieving. We pray especially for Brian and Nancy Hightus that you would bring them comfort. Pray that you would bring each who are grieving the comfort and the peace that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we know that in this world there are many who need your healing, uh, need, uh, need strength, uh, whether that is in their physical bodies, whether it is in their spiritual life, their financial world, um, and their relationships. Lord, you know the healing that we need, and we pray that you would, that you would bring it to us pray especially today for Jack Barr and for Naomi Adams, for Jim Valen, for Susie Barnes, for Connie Love, that you would pour your healing uh, upon them. Give them the strength that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Lord, we give you thanks for the words that point us to you, that point us to the work that you have done so that we know that it is not about us. Today we give you thanks for the, the work that has, <clears throat> that has been done <clears throat> for Huxley, <clears throat> Alan Johnson, in his baptism yesterday. Lord, we... Uh, ask that you would be with Paul and Rachel, his parents, that you would give them the strength that they need, give them the faith that they need, and stir up in Huxley your faith, Lord. Lord, stir up your faith and continue to strengthen each of us, strengthen, <clears throat> strengthen our trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, we thank you for the gift of your love, for your life, uh, for going to the cross for us, for conquering death, for, for bringing us new life. Lord, we uh, ask for all of this in your name, and we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Called and sent by Jesus Christ, we the people of First Lutheran are gathering to know Jesus, serving to make a difference. <laughs> 